There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Your parents or whoever raised you had a big influence on how you deal with money today. There were probably some good and some not so good money habits and messages you picked up along the way. Maybe your parents never even talked about money. Whatever messages you received or didn't receive have a big impact on your money success. The good news, there's a lot you can do about it. I'm so excited to share this episode with you. I'm Shauna Compton-Game, and this is Millennial Money. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Compton-Game, where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna, money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. Welcome, welcome to the show. I am so thrilled to have you here. This episode was inspired by an Ask Shauna question that just really got me thinking about our relationship with money and our parents. And so I thought this is worthy of a full episode. We'll dive into the Ask Shauna a little later in this episode, so I'll keep you in some suspense. We do get a lot of good things from our parents Even if we're adopted, you likely picked up some good genes from your biological parents and maybe some good habits and behaviors from the parents who raised you. Maybe there's some good stuff. Maybe there's some not so good stuff. For me, uh, thinking about this, I got a lot of thinking big from my dad and a softness, I think, from my mom. My mom is probably the single kindest person I know. And she's always willing to help out if I called her at any moment at time of the day and said, oh, I need help with this or that she would be like, Okay, wh- what do I need to do? I'll come over. Do you need me to get you something? She's just that type of person. And my dad, he worked a lot when I was younger. And so I would try to find time, like any time that I could to be with him. And that's how I got really into basketball and still to this day, super, super love basketball and know many of the players by their names and a lot of stats. I was always trying to find time with him because he worked so much. And 
he did work in the financial industry. So we were always talking about money. Money was a conversation topic that was not unusual in my house. However, I didn't learn a lot about budgeting and the practical side of money. And I think I really struggled with that when I got out of college. I didn't really know what I was doing. I had a job, but I guess I just kind of thought that money always flows to you. And so I was definitely not intentional with my spending. (laughs) I wouldn't even remotely use the word intention. And so I just went along and I kind of mimicked a lot of the habits that my parents had shown over the, you know, few years that I had been alive in this world. And it wasn't until later on I had an aha moment where I thought, okay, maybe I actually need to change a few things. There was a a 2015 study by the University of Washington that says 30% of our financial behavior can be attributed to our genes. That just really blows my mind. I think what what complicates this is that in most families, maybe yours, money was not a conversation topic. It was just not something that was talked about, not even remotely talked about. And maybe there was even a sense of fear or dread or anxiety or panic over money. And my guess is that this happens because most of us don't really know what we're doing. So a parent never wants to say, hey, so this money thing, it's going to be with you for the rest of your life, but I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm not really going to teach you anything. Just just go and figure out. It's like WTF, right? <laughs> How are we supposed to do this thing? How are we supposed to automatically know how to deal with our money, how to deal with debt, how to save? Uh, my husband says all the time that his dad used to say to him, well, you just you just save money. And he's like, okay, well, but how do you do that? And his dad's like, I don't know, you just save money. (laughs) And so there are all of these kind of ways about money that we were taught or not taught in our family situation, but they have a really big impact. So I think there's a lot to look at here. I think in a household where money was scarce and you were told there was never enough money, you might find as an adult that you can either spend with kind of reckless abandon because money was so scarce when you were younger and you just think, well, I've got money now. I just need to spend it. Or maybe you have this paralyzing fear about spending money that you're just sort of stuck in that scarcity loop, which is really, really easy to do. And it's hard to break out of it. Another thing to think about is that if you grew up in a house where you talked about money, you might actually be really good at budgeting and saving your money and have a good relationship with your money. But this is this is really rare. <laughs> I don't see this a lot. If you're if you're saying like, okay, yeah, that's me, just know that you definitely have a little bit of a leg up from the rest of us because most of us have try to just figure this out on our own. And then, of course, there are systemic issues like the racial wealth gap, wage gap for LGBTQ families, women's pay gap, lack of financial literacy, and so much more. And we cannot downplay all of those things. They have definitely been passed down generation to generation and culturally, systemically, not a lot is changing, unfortunately. And so if, if, that is you. If that's really resonating with you, I just want to encourage you, listen to more podcasts, read more blogs, constantly educate yourself because it just takes one person, I believe, to really change that generationally. Uh, But it's a lot of work. Uh, One of the most powerful steps you can take to really break bad money habits from your parents is to do an exercise I call writing out your money story. If you think about it, every great book or movie has a story. There's an arc to the story. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. And you do as well. You have a money story. The beginning has already been written. You may be in the middle of it. You don't know the end of it, certainly. But you know enough of it to piece together 
some things. So I did this exercise a few years ago, and it really transformed things for me. It helped me really recognize some bad habits that I was carrying on from my parents, from my childhood. And then it also had me think about, well, what do I really want to be about? What are my values? How can I bring intention to my money? So here are some questions to ask yourself. You can either journal them, leave yourself a voice memo, or just kind of let them pop in your head. But the first one is, what is your earliest memory around money? What do you really remember? So there's a stat that says by age seven, our money personality is formed. And I don't remember age seven or a lot before age seven, but it doesn't really matter that I don't remember. It's an imprint was formed in my brain. (laughs) before age seven. And so I'm just kind of out there in the world, perhaps mimicking some of these habits. Another thing to think about is what money habits or traits do you like? And what do you dislike from your parents or whoever raised you? And bonus points here. Do you mimic any of that behavior today? Did you grow up in money scarcity or abundance? So what can you remember about how you grew up and how money was talked about and related to? Can you trace your parents' relationship to money to your current relationship around money? Now, this takes some deep diving, some honesty, some honest conversations with yourself. And, uh, You know, I think all of us can uncover something. There's just something there. It just, we can't have come from someone raising us or our parents, whoever that might be, grandparents maybe raised you or a family member. We can't come from that environment as as a kid where we learned everything from them, how to walk and talk and all sorts of things and not have learned some things about money. Another thing to think about is what are the good and not so good things that have happened to you around money? So what does your money timeline look like? What are some of those highs and lows that have happened to you with money? And can you look at them from maybe a little bit different perspective and say, hmm, what is maybe just traced back to my childhood? And then how do you currently feel about money? Is money fear inducing, heart racing, stressful, etc.? Or do you feel at peace, like one with money. (laughs) If you're at that place, I'm so admiring you because that's a really tough place to get to. Some of us or most of us are somewhere between that like a fear inducing heart racing and peace, although we tend to easily sway back towards the fear inducing. But just how do you currently feel about money? And the key is when you're writing out your money story or you're thinking about it is not to judge at all. Do not judge anything that you've brought from your childhood, any bad habits or traits. Just be aware of what's happening because you can't change the past. We can only change the future, my friend. So that's what we're working on. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful. 
ad-free and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. We have an Ask Shauna, and this one comes from Emily. Emily says, Hi, Shauna. Love your podcast, and I'm so grateful for everything I'm learning. I could share so many dollar-focused financial changes and successes with you, but my very favorite change has been my newfound openness to talking about, learning about, and asking about money perceptions, mindsets, and health with friends and family, especially the women in my life. These conversations have been all the emotions, from relieving, empowering, to heartbreaking, which leads me to a question I can't shake. I know your podcast is literally titled Millennial Money, and that it is about all the things our parents never taught us. But here's where I'm hung up. In talking with my mom, it's clear she didn't teach me about money because she didn't know, in large part because she was systemically disempowered around money her whole life. I can see she is so proud of the steps I'm taking, and I can see the regret, sorrow, and paralysis she has about her own financial path. So what can we teach our parents? What advice or learnings can we share with them that are relevant and useful in later years of life? For the countless ways the women in the generations before have paved the way, how can millennial women use our new and improved access to financial literacy to pave the road to financial wholeness, empowerment with the women who have raised us? Wow. (laughs) Emily, this is an amazing question. As I mentioned earlier, This question has inspired this entire episode, and I can't thank you enough for sharing this. This is such an important question to ask. I think both learning and talking to our parents or parent about money can be so super tough. No one likes to admit mistakes, or they just don't know how something works. So talking about money is right there with talking about the birds and bees. <laughs> it just feels weird. Parents don't like to talk to us. We don't always like to talk to our parents. So there's just this void that happens where we don't talk about money. So I love that you're sharing the changes that are happening in your life with your mom and that she's seeing that even if it's filling her with a little bit of regret because maybe she didn't have that same experience but at least you're having the conversation. So I love this idea of passing on what you're learning to your mom. And honestly, I think you are never too old to learn about money. I think for starters, you could pass along the idea in this episode about writing out her money story and seeing patterns and habits and attitudes that she might still be carrying from her childhood that are just no longer serving her. There are a lot of aha moments that can happen with this. And Again, it's about this awareness. It's about seeing it from a different perspective and going, ah, okay, I understand or I can see why I do or don't do X thing with my money. Okay, now that I have that awareness, can I make some sort of change? From a practical side, just purely practical speaking, if you've been listening to this show for a while, there's so much you could pass on. You could talk about the importance of your credit score and how to build it up. You could talk about ways to attack debt from a strategy perspective, not just throwing extra money on debt, but actually coming up with a strategy so we could get rid of it. 
you could talk again about the overall mindset around money and why that is so important, why that matters and how that factors into quote unquote success. You could share how to build a strong emergency fund or ways to even start getting invested. Even if your parent or your mom is older, it doesn't matter. It's never too late to start investing. I know the numbers are not on your side when you're older. I fully understand that. But that is also not a reason not to do something. Uh, One of the biggest things you could share, I think, is just how to flow your money every month and being super intentional with your spending. So sometimes, yes, we've got to pay bills and we have to spend money on things that we don't necessarily want to spend money on. But there are a lot of ways we spend money every month that is just not intentional. It's not moving us towards a goal. It's not trying to get rid of debt or trying to save us for a house or a car purchase or whatever it might be. So it's really thinking about what is your vision? What are your values? What do you want your life to be about? And how can we get your money to move in that direction? I think that might be one of the most powerful things you could share with your mom and invite her into that conversation. And, you know, maybe you could help her uh, align her money better with her values, her vision, her goals. So there are so many things that you can just reverse take from this podcast and and teach your mom and really help it become impactful for her. And I always say that there are so many money lessons that you can learn on the show, no matter what stage of life you're in. This show might be called Millennial Money, but it's really about adapting and adopting a millennial way of thinking, of thinking outside of the box, of looking at money differently and your life differently. To me, that's what millennial means. So I don't want it to be so much of just an age bracket. I want it to be a way of thinking, of just looking at the world differently, looking at our money differently, our relationships, how we show up, what we want to be in the world. To me, that's what I hope this show embodies. So invite your mom in, invite her in to to listen to episodes. Maybe you can open up this great conversation with her where you can start sharing after episodes. I know we have a lot of parent-child listeners on this show, and I think that's so cool. We have a lot of partner-spouse listeners on this show where they just get together and talk about a guest after a show and what they like and what they didn't like and what they might want to infuse into their life. So there's so many great ways, Emily. Thank you so much for sharing this conversation. And um, I so look forward to hearing how your mom takes some of these tips and really starts transforming her own life. Let's dive back into the episode and talk about some strategy. So we've talked about how to first bring awareness and recognize maybe some of those bad habits we picked up from our parents. Now the question is, what the heck do we do about it? Well, the first step is what you're doing right now. It's getting educated about finances and the topics that really interest you. So there are courses and blogs and podcasts and workshops. Uh, Stay tuned in the next few episodes for a workshop I'm launching in August, all about spending with intention. That's going to be great and sort of further along this conversation. But Pick an area of finance that you really want to learn about and dive in for 30 days. If you need any resources or connections to past guests, just reach out to me. This is a community here, so I'm more than happy to to help you out. We've talked about this on the show a lot, but just talking about money helps to break any of these generational issues around money. Whether that's talking about money with friends, a spouse, a partner, even your pet, (laughs) anybody that will listen, the release really happens when you can talk about the good and not so good stuff around money. So we tend to only want to talk about the good stuff, but the not so good stuff is important too, because that is the humanity, I think, to money. That is the connector, the bridge of someone being able to say, I was over budget last month or uh, to use my credit card or uh, maybe things didn't work out as well as I thought they would. And then someone else saying like, okay, they shared that. Well, I can also share that. Yeah, I've had that happen. And so then there's this connection that happens that I think is really needed. As of 2021, 
get this, only 20% of couples participate equally in financial decisions. So if your parents never talked about money, you might also be mimicking that pattern. You might also think this is a taboo subject and that's okay. But when you can, again, normalize these conversations around money, you can remove some of the anxiety. So this is, I think, especially important if you have kids, start talking about money from a healthy perspective and teach them now not only the money lessons that they need to learn, but also that it's okay to make mistakes, that it's okay to keep learning. It's okay to maybe not have all of the answers. I think that is just as important as learning the tips, tools, strategies, techniques. And this year, we've had a lot of guests talk about the power of cash flow and being super intentional with your money. I mean, I think this is one of the big lessons that have come about in the last year, year and a half is intentionality. And I think this is also a top secret to building wealth. Of all the ultra wealthy people I've worked with as a financial planner, they all talk about this idea of cash flow, of having flow with your money. So that might be another way to break some of the bad habits and and to put into action something different, to be really intentional and focused on cash flow. And just looking at your money differently, you don't have to have the same makeup that your parents did. You don't have to invest your money the same way or own real estate or don't own real estate because they did or didn't do that. This is your life. So I want you to create what what's going to work for you, what's going to be super exciting for you. You could also think about, are your spending habits similar to your parents? Are there any changes you need to make? And what I mean by this is obviously when we talk about cash flow, your income is your income and there's not a lot you can do about it short of getting a raise or an extra side hustle or picking up an extra client all of those things are great. And inflows are fantastic. We love the inflows. But it's the outflows that we really need to be concerned with. The outflows are where a lot of these bad habits that are just kind of unconsciously carried through our childhood m- might show up. And we might not even be really super aware of it. So focus on your outflows. Focus on looking at each of your outflows, every little penny that flows out of your bank account and say to yourself, is this getting me closer to my goals? Is this not? Now, of course, every outflow again is not going to get you closer to your goal. And there are going to be a lot of things you have to pay that you just have to pay. But that extra money, that extra bit of money, that's what we really need to be looking about. Because these money habits passed down, they can be tough. They can be really tough to break. But I think it's it's so worth it. Not only will it lead to a better relationship with money for you, but it's also going to create a better relationship for future generations, for your kids and everybody that you come in contact with. And this is how we change money as a culture and society. I believe that it all starts with you and that change can really happen. So I want to give a couple shout outs we're starting this new shout out segment on uh, the podcast. We have a shout out from Rebecca who said, I got married last month. I had been postponing my wedding for over a year. I had the most magical wedding at a fraction of the price. And I have to tell you that I am so grateful that I actually waited to get married because this was the wedding that I was actually supposed to have. So congrats to you. That is incredible. We have another shout out to Brian, who recently paid off the last $2,000 of his student loan debt. I mean, that deserves a champagne toast for sure. So congrats to you, Brian. And then we've got Eliza, who recently just bought her very first townhome. Eliza said she'd been saving up for the last five years. She'd been listening to episodes, just getting any bit of money knowledge that she possibly could. She's been making changes with her spending and finally was able to save enough money to buy her first condo. And in her words, she says, it was nothing short of a magical, 
magical, magical, magical experience when I was handed the keys and I realized I had done it. So that is so fantastic. Look, if you have a shout out, head right over to the show notes. You can fill out the Ask Shauna. Tell me what's going on in your life. It can be small. It can be big. Let's celebrate all of us on this show. And thank you so much for listening to this episode. You can head to the show notes for all the links to the episode sponsors. And please be sure to hit follow in the podcast player to make sure you get all of the recent Millennial Money podcast episodes. And I will see you back here in a few days for a brand new one. Hey, you. Yes, you. Before you go, we want to say thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the links, tags, and ads you've heard on today's episode, check out the show notes or go to mmoneypodcast.com where you'll find more episodes to share with your friends. While you're at it, leave us a review and make sure to subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss out on all the money tips and tricks that will take you from a millennial regular to a millennial money expert. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode. Algorithms can do so much more than control social media feeds. In fact, they have the power to save lives and improve our health. At the Weizmann Institute, Professor Yonina Eldar has pioneered innovative algorithms that optimize MRI scans and make ultrasound devices more portable, affordable, and accessible. Professor Eldar's lab develops AI tools that can pave the way to new technologies that can see, hear, and communicate beyond existing limits. Learn more at CelebratingGreatMinds.org.